guys, welcome back to the BC Boom Kids channel. I'm Crystal and I'm so excited you're joining us today. We are continuing our series, Start the Party, and it's all about joy. Now, what is joy? It's choosing to celebrate what God is doing. And we should definitely celebrate everything that God is doing for us and our family members, our friends, and others. So I want you to stay tuned because our lesson focuses on the reason why God wants us to celebrate and be joyful. This lesson is going to take you all the way from the Old Testament into the New Testament. So stay tuned and I'll be back with you momentarily to have a conversation about our lesson. See you soon. Bye. Hey. Hey. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about joy. And about how some of the most epic parties ever have been thrown by God. Let's go. Hey, I'm Carter. Oh, uh, and I'm Zeke. Today, we're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. You know, instead of being glued to your phone screen. Hey, I happen to be reading about something God made. What's that? Laughter. <laughs> but what about it? Laughter's the best medicine. Not antibiotics? No, seriously. Laughter helps you breathe in more oxygen and increases the endorphins released by your brain. Endorphins, right. The chemicals that make you feel happy. See, laughter is like taking a vitamin for the soul. Yeah, but you can choose to take a vitamin. Laughing just, you know, it happens. Well, this says when you make yourself laugh, a real laugh will happen. Okay. This isn't working. I don't feel healthy, I just feel kind of silly. Maybe we need to laugh harder. Ah, that's it. This is a bust. Oh, I know a knock knock joke. Okay. Say knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there? I don't know, man. Huh? Huh? Ah, you got it. Oh, you were supposed to laugh. It, it's funny. We are totally unfunny today. <sighs> I never thought it'd be this hard to find some LOLs. Wait a minute. Are you saying that finding some laughs is a challenge? Oh, you are on. Let's do it. Welcome to the LOL Challenge! Great. Okay, how do we do this? You have one minute to take turns making each other laugh. Most LOLs achieved wins. Go! What? Okay, right now? <laughs> now say it! <laughs> what? Chubby Checker. Ch Chubby Checker, say it! I feel healthier already. Yeah, gotta make a habit of laughing more. Speaking of habits, it's time for the story before the story. Today we're starting out in Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Old Testament. In the beginning, God created a beautiful, incredible world. But people turned away from God and the world was broken. Even then, God had a plan to restore us to relationship. God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the whole world through his family. That family, the Israelites, grew in number. They were enslaved in Egypt, but God had led them to freedom. In the wilderness, God gave them laws to keep them safe and connected to God. Before God's people finally entered the land God had promised, their leader, Moses, 
reminded them of everything God had spoken. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. And I need you to hold on to your seats because we are going to cover a lot of ground today. After 40 long years in the wilderness, the Israelites were about to enter the land God had promised to them. Moses spoke to the people. Remember that God told us, I have given you all this land. Now Moses knew how easy it is to forget. He knew that in the new land, God's people would be surrounded by nations who didn't necessarily follow God's ways. So Moses took time to remind the Israelites of the main things God had said and done over the last 40 years. In fact, this speech of his is most of the book of Deuteronomy. Listen to the rules and laws I'm going to teach you. Obey them and you will live. <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty serious, huh? And it was, except that God never meant for us to be serious all the time. In fact, God actually told the Israelites to plan big parties throughout the year. Seriously, these celebrations were to be reminders of all that God had done for them, including a special festival at harvest time each year. Gather the grain from your threshing floors, take the fresh wine from your wine presses, then celebrate the Feast of Booths for seven days. Be filled with joy and honor the Lord your God. The Lord will bless you in everything you do, and you will be full of joy. I've got a question for you. What's the longest party that you've ever been to? Maybe you've had a birthday party that was like an all-day adventure. But God told the people to celebrate for seven whole days, an entire week. See, it's easy to get busy and forget about the amazing things God has done. So God told the Israelites to get in the habit of pausing, to look around and see God's goodness and to share it with each other. God knew that it would bring them life-giving joy. As we travel through God's story recorded in the Bible, we discovered that the Israelites didn't always keep these feasts, but every time they did, it helped them remember all that God had done. In the time of Solomon, the third king of Israel, the entire nation gathered together to celebrate the Feast of Booths by taking the Ark of the Covenant into the newly built temple. Lord, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You keep the covenant you made with us. You show us your love. You do that when we follow you with all our hearts. Now in this case, the people celebrated for two whole weeks. Because they remembered all that God had done for them, their hearts were full of joy. After Solomon though, the kingdom split in two. Israel and Judah were led by many kings. Now, a few of these kings were wise and listened to God, but most of them just forgot about God. And eventually the kingdoms were attacked. The people were scattered or captured and taken to foreign lands. But at long last, a group of people were allowed to return to their homeland. After the wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt, the people gathered together to hear the priest Ezra read aloud from God's laws for the first time in many years. Praise the Lord. He is the great God. Amen. 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 The people quickly realized that they had been ignoring God's laws. They were so moved that they began to weep. But Ezra told them, This day is set apart to honor the Lord your God. So don't weep, don't be sad. And the governor, Nehemiah, encouraged them. Go and enjoy some good food and sweet drinks. Send some of it to people who don't have any. This day is holy to our Lord. So don't be sad. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. How awesome is that? God's joy can make us strong and be able to face even the most difficult things in life. The Israelites went on to celebrate in a special way. We are to live in special shelters during the Feast of Booths. Go out into the central hill country. Bring back some branches and use them to make booths. For a whole week, the people camped out in these shelters, as they had in the wilderness, and shared joyful meals together. God's people continue to celebrate this feast. In fact, hundreds of years later, when Jesus arrived on the scene, they were still celebrating every single year. On the last day of the festival, Jesus entered the courtyard of the temple to teach. And just as he did so often, Jesus chose to take something old and make it new. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Does anyone believe in me? Then, just as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from inside them. He must be a prophet. 
Maybe he's the one God has sent to rescue us. The Feast of Booths had always been a joyful time for the Israelites to remember how God provided for their needs. But Jesus took it one step further. Just as God had provided food and water in the wilderness, now God had sent Jesus to offer living water, a way to life forever with God. It was the most joyful news the Israelites had ever received. And it's still the most joyful news that we can celebrate today. The end. Mm, God wants us to party. How about that? It's easy to think of God's laws as really hard. Or not very exciting. But God actually wants us to spend time celebrating. Exactly. God loves us deeply and made a way for our lives to be filled with joy no matter what we face. So, what's our part in the story? Well, if we're gonna be honest, a lot of days don't feel very joyful. I mean, there's getting up early and school and chores and arguments with your brother or sister. That's why God actually wants us to get in the habit of pausing to look for joy. By celebrating. And remembering all the good things God has done for us. Yep. You don't even need to build yourself a shelter out of branches and celebrate for a week. To be honest, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. But you can also look for places in your everyday life to celebrate and find joy. Like at dinner time or bedtime. Exactly. I mean, some families take turns sharing one thing that brought them joy during the day. Yeah, like a friend who said something really encouraging when you were sad. Or something crazy your puppy did. Your family could even create some bigger habits each year. If you always go camping for your dad's birthday, use that time to focus on the good things God has given your family. Or if you get to take a special trip to grandma's every summer, take the time in the car to talk about some of your favorite memories. Instead of one more, are we there yet? Well said. I love that God gives us the power to make good habits, like choosing joy. And that joy actually makes us stronger. That is something to celebrate, for sure. Woohoo! See you next time. So here's the thing, make a habit of choosing joy. Just like you can choose to laugh more. Even when you aren't feeling it. You know what I'm feeling, Carter? Hmm. This is worse than the dentist. <laughs> what? This is worse than the dentist. I had no idea what you just said. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the story. <sighs> Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. You do it again. What do I get here? What are you doing, Lucky? Like, Iron Man? Yeah, you wanna go to, like, get some dates or something? I don't know how to taste it. I think you yeah, just have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, do it. Who is it? What do you think? That's how I'm feeling It's impossible For me believing That I can't, that I won't Make it happen Just watch what I got All the strength that I have in me I'm gonna stand up tall Gonna walk through the fire You can knock me down I'll jump up even higher And I believe
Yummy, 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 yum. Hey, John, how's it going? Whoa, are you okay? Pizza. Oh, awesome, thanks. Wait. What? What? Oh, oh no! Are you okay? I'm fine, but why would you- No, not you! <laughs> Pizza party? Yeah. Welcome to the So-and-So so -and -so show. show! Oh, I lost another one. That's okay, I think we have enough for now. You are here on a special day because today John and I are celebrating our friend anniversary. <laughs> we've celebrated, okay. We've celebrated every year since we first became friends. Yeah, and we've been friends for a lot of years. We have. It's important to take time every once in a while to remember the people in your life that yeah. are important to you. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that this is a pretty big event. True, true. Every year we pick a different theme for the party and this year's theme is is a Balloona Palooza. <laughs> Remember last year's? I don't. What was it again? Oh, um, look that way. Oh. Mm, hey, great beach theme you came up with this year, friend. I'll never forget this. Oh, thank you, friend. I love these tiny umbrellas. I know it goes great with the coconut water. I think this might be the best friend anniversary ever. Are you kidding me? Don't you remember the theme from five years ago? I don't. What was it again? I can't believe you got us into space, friend. I'll never forget this. <laughs> well, almost space. This simulator feels real though, right? It does. Whee! Oh, wow, that looks fun. <laughs> I want to try. <laughs> Oh, this has to be the best Ray. friend anniversary party we've ever had. Even better than our friend anniversary party 10 years ago? You remember that theme? I don't. What was it again? Seriously? Look that way. Oh. Hey, friend. Happy friend anniversary! Yeah, where you been, my man? Oh, these luscious locks don't groom themselves. Uh, it sure is groovy that we've been friends as long as we have. Right on, <laughs> can you dig it? Hey, let's boogie. All right. Disco will never die, and I am never gonna forget this. Whoa! Ha! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Kick! Kick! What with my Oh yeah. I forgot about that. At least I still have my hair. <laughs> what? Me. Uh, how can you forget all our friend anniversaries? It's, it's like they're not really important to you. Oh, it's not that they're... I'm sorry, J I'm sorry, but... I'm, so I'm sorry, John. I love our friend anniversaries, but it's remembering the friendship that matters most, right? Besides, I, I remembered it this year. Ah, uh, see? Oh, you shouldn't have. Uh. Oh, okay. Uh. <gasps> it's a disco ball cup with a tiny umbrella and a space sticker. I've always wanted one. I know, you talk about it every day. You do remember our friend anniversary. Of course. Ah, oh, thanks friend. You know what? Your gift's in one of these balloons. Oh. Which one? I don't, don't remember. 
Well, that'll be fun later. Oh. Until then, it's Bible Story Time with Kellen. Hey, guys. Oh, wow. That's a lot of balloons. Yeah, it is. And my gift is in one of them. So... It's a balloon search party. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, we're celebrating our friend anniversary. We do it every year. That's so great that you guys make it a habit of celebrating your friendship every year. It kind of reminds me of another annual celebration that we learned from the Bible. Do you mind if I tell you about it? Oh, take it away, Kellen. Perfect. The annual celebration is called the Feast of Booths. Here's some backstory. Many years ago, God's people, the Israelites, were traveling in the desert waiting for the day when they could go to the land God had promised them. The promised land! Boom! Who said that? That'd be me, Chef Zeke Rubinson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, woo! Need salt. Zing! Go! Boom. <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff. Um, welcome? Do you know something about the Feast of Booths? Do I? Yeah, I was there for the very first one. <laughs> oh. Paprika. Wait, you were there? <laughs> yeah. It was thousands of years. You know what? Never mind. Can you tell us why you celebrated the feast? Oh, yeah. We have all kinds of celebrations. Okay, so our leader, Moses, he wants us to remember all the things that God has done for us. So. We celebrate all the time. The Feast of Booths is when we celebrate how God provides for us during the harvest. The feast lasts a week. <laughs> what a time. Wow, a week long party. I know, <laughs> kerplunk. <laughs> we do it the same time every year. It's like a habit, but one that we do on purpose. This year, I'm making soup for the feast. God has done so much for us. I hope we never stop celebrating. <laughs> Let's see, there it is. Ribbit, bit, 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 bite. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for that information. That was so helpful. Yep, you betcha. Hey, where's the fiddle? Jonas, did you eat the fiddle? It's true. God wanted the Israelites to celebrate every year to help them remember all that God had done. But the Israelites didn't always keep up with the celebrations. We sure didn't. Oh, is that you, Chef Zeke? Smash. No, I'm a chef of Sal Rubinson. Chef Zeke was a distant cousin from many years back. But you look so much like Chef... You know what? Never mind. Tell us your story. Well, you see, a while back we got so caught up in our own thing, we just forgot to celebrate the feast. But then, King Solomon, you see. Oh, so you're from the time of King Solomon, the third king of Israel. I sure am. Wham, smack, zoom, vroom. <laughs> you see, King Solomon celebrated the feast with the entire nation when we brought the Ark of the Covenant to its new home in the temple. Another week-long party? A week? No way! This one, it lasted uh, two weeks! <laughs> Slash, fizz, meow! <laughs> hey, that was hard. So the celebrations continued, but it wasn't always easy. You see, after King Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was split into two. Some of the kings followed God, some not so much. Eventually, both kingdoms were attacked by other nations and the people were taken to other lands. But we're back now. Another chef. That's right. A totally new and different chef that you have not seen before. Chef Phil Rubinson. Right. So what time period are you from? Uh, ever hear of uh, Nehemiah or Ezra? I have. Yeah, that time. Great. Carry on. So our people were scattered all over the place. And our city, Jerusalem, was, it was in shambles. Things were not good. No one, well, no one felt like celebrating. <laughs> but then, then Nehemiah, he led us to rebuild the walls. And Ezra, the priest, he got us all together to read God's laws to us. It was, uh, it was the first time in a very long time. It was, it was, uh, it was the very first time that... Yeah, I bet it was pretty emotional. 
No, 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 no. It's just... It, 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 it's just the onion. Sure. You see, we'd stop listening to God. And when you realize that, when you realize that... You get sad. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's the onion here. That's all it is. Of course. Well, what happened next? We celebrated. We celebrated the Feast of Booths. <gasps> we built little tents and we camped out in them just like Moses did in the wilderness all those long years ago. <sighs> yeah, here's the onion. <sighs> and God's people continued this celebration for hundreds of years, even during the time of Jesus. It's the same, but different. Let me guess. Glug. <laughs> That's right. Another totally new and different chef. Joe Rubinson. Distant relative of, well, all those other chefs. Amazing resemblance. What can you tell us about the Feast of Booths during your time? Hmm. Well, the most recent feast was just like any other, and then swoosh! <laughs> Jesus shows up. And on the last day of the festival, he started teaching the people. That's right. Jesus stood in the temple courtyard and told the people, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Does anyone believe in me? Then just as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from inside them. Jesus took the Feast of Booths a step further. Just as God provided food and water for the Israelites, now God had sent Jesus to be the living water, a way to have eternal life with God. Well, that's the best news, right? And the Feast of Booths is already a joyful time. What Jesus said is just, well, it's icing on the cake. Bam! <laughs> the Israelites celebrated the Feast of Booths every year to remember all that God had done. And we should make it a habit of celebrating God too. We should choose to be joyful for all God has done for us. Maybe it's something you do every day when you talk to God or something you do every year, like on a friend anniversary. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Kellen. You know, it's true. I'm so glad that God made a way for us to be friends. Mm -hmm. It's brought me so much joy. <laughs> oh, right back at you, buddy. <laughs> Reveal the question. <laughs> How can you remember to be joyful? Well, I mark all my special occasions in a calendar. That way I don't forget. Gotta mark next year's friend anniversary. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna love the theme. Oh, great. <laughs> what was this year's theme again? I'm joking, it was balloons, I remember. I have a journal that I like to write in every day, and at night I'll read it and think back on all the things that brought me joy that day. Oh, a joy journal. Exactly. Oh, cool, what about you? How can you remember to be joyful? Yeah, talk about it with someone, and we'll see you next time on The So and So Show! Hey friends, welcome back. I am so glad that I um, listened to this lesson today because it made me conscious of being sure that I choose joy, that I make a habit of choosing joy. Notice it says make a habit. A habit is something that we do often, constantly, and it becomes a, such a part of our life that we don't even have to think about it. A habit is something we might even do unconsciously, which means I don't have to be reminded to do it. So making a habit of choosing joy, even when I'm having a hard time, I should make, be able to remember all the good things that have happened in my life, all the things that God has done for me, things that family members and friends and others have done for me, and that should bring me so much happiness. We need to remember that God wants us to celebrate the good things. He has done so many good things in our lives. We don't have a reason to be sad. We don't have a reason to be unhappy because so many good things have happened to us. So as the lesson taught us, we should make it a habit of choosing joy in all situations. Before you go, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this lesson that helps us remember that we should choose joy. And that joy, God, comes from you and those you send and put into our lives. We thank you for those people, Lord God. We thank you for those times of celebrations that you have allowed us to celebrate with family and with friends. And Father, when we are having those down moments, those unhappy moments, those sad moments, we ask that you help us remember 
that we should choose joy and remember all the good things that have happened in our lives, in the lives of our family, in the lives of our friends and others, Lord God. And for those who do not know the joy of having you in their lives, Lord God, we ask that you help them to make the choice of accepting you, that they might feel this happiness and celebrate having you in their life. And we will forever be grateful and thankful for all that you have done. It is in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Okay, friends. Now, remember, before you go, you can always continue your studies in this lesson using our Parent Q app. You can do this by yourself. You can do it with family members. And you can also do it with friends. So, I want you to um, come back next week as we continue this series. Start the party. And remember this week to focus on making it a habit to choose joy. See you next time. Bye.